Good afternoon, everyone. Compliments of the new season. Uh, my name is Vinolia. I'm the marketing and event coordinator for ISCA. I believe that we are all excited to be attending this session today. I would like to welcome everyone to ISCA's launch event, which will be the first live event for the year 2022. Before we continue, I would like to go through some housekeeping rules with you. Kindly mute yourselves to avoid, to avoid any background noise. I'm going to only allow our speaker to unmute themselves and all of us, can we please kindly mute ourselves? If you have any questions during the session, please uh, wait for the session to end, um, for the presentation to end and then We'll give you the opportunity to present your question. And for those who would like to write in our chat box, you can write your questions in our chat box and also your comments. Again, um, yes, I would like for everyone to please adhere to the rules as we continue with the session. Today we have our speaker. I won't say he is our guest speaker, He's our speaker, uh, I would say our president, our CEO for ISCA, who is uh, Prof. Marcus Ambe. Professor Marcus Ambe is an esteemed procurement and supply chain management profes professional. Uh, Professor Marcus is at the Department of Applied Management, School of Public and Operations Management at University of South Africa, which is well known as UNISA. He is the chairperson of the Public Tender Committee at UNISA, Deputy Chairperson, Technical Standards and Competencies, Interim SCM Council, South Africa, President of African Institute for Supply Chain Research, Advisory Committee Member for Smart Procurement World, uh, Chairperson of the Supply Chain Management Research Group at UNISA, Chairperson of Masters and Doctoral Research Colloquium Committee, as well as Masters and Doctoral Coordinator for Supply Chain Management at the Department of Applied Management. Professor Marcus Ambe served as the Chairperson of as the Chair of Department of Applied Management in 2016. He has published extensively and presented numerous papers in local and international conferences. Professor Marcus provides supply chain management consulting and advisory services to leading organizations and institutions such as National Treasury, Limpopo Provincial Government, National School of Government, South Africa. He has executed numerous projects in the area of strategic procurement planning, procurement management, strategic sourcing, category, category management, collaborative procurement, total cost of ownership, procurement analytics, sustainable procurement, innovative procurement, as well as ethics and good government governance in supply chain management. I would like for all of us to take this opportunity to welcome Professor Marcus Ambe amongst us. Thank you, Professor. You can continue. Uh, thank you very much, um, our program director of Vinolia for that uh, extensive uh, introduction. In fact, um, when you were giving that, I was just reflecting. And um, um, it is an honor to be part of this engagement. And I also want to extend our, my warm regards to our extreme participants that are here and our viewers following us on our social media platform. On behalf of the African Institute for Supply Chain Research, indeed, I am humbled and delighted to serve as the speaker for the uh, first research support webinar series 2022. Um, I've been given all the accolades, but I just want to say that um, we just published the third edition of the supply chain management um, um, prescribed textbook, we call it the supply chain management and balance scorecard approach. 
So if you haven't uh, been opportune to have a copy, I will encourage you to visit Transcribe uh, Publishers so that you can um, try and get a copy for yourself. Uh, colleagues, indeed, um, this is the first of many research support webinar series that will be conducted on this platform to build research capacity for the supply chain management community in 2022. Uh, my presentation today would focus on how ISCA can support you in advancing your supply chain career. And uh, I will appeal to you to kindly pay attention to the presentation. And uh, once I am done, I would be um, appreciative if I get questions and contributions on how we can be able to work together to make a difference in this uh, noble um, profession. And therefore, in line with that, the outline of the presentation is as follows. I'm going to take a reflection on uh, some of the key things or key team on my inaugural lecture in 2015. I will look at the state of supply chain management, um, the implications of COVID-19, and some of what are some of the um, um, supply chain career facts which we currently have on the table, and also give a perspective on uh, what ISCA is all about and uh, what ISCA can do to support um, career advancement, and also looking at some of the highlights of the achievements of ISCA in 2021. And uh, what are we planning? What are our strategic aspirations for 2022? What are some of the career um, opportunities that are there for uh, upcoming supply chain management professionals? And what is it that um, is individuals and organizations can benefit um, by affiliating with the Institute? I think on that note, like I indicated, I just want to take you back um, um, seven years ago, seven years ago, when I was promoted from an associate professor to a full professor in 2015, I had an opportunity to do an inaugural lecture. Uh, an inaugural lecture is a confirmant of a professorial appointment within an institution. And on that particular occasion, I delivered a public lecture on the team born to change, supply chain management is a journey and not a destination. This was during my confirmation. And um, I articulated strongly that supply chain management is born to change philosophy. And, and I also articulated that it was, it is not a destination, but it should rather be seen as a journey with which organizations strive to achieve competitive advantage by minimizing cost and optimizing customer satisfaction. With a series of events and activities that are happening in our society today, I think the presentation I did is a testimony of the current supply chain management development as supply chain continues to evolve. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you all to be mindful that supply chains are increasingly become important, strategic, and critical to achieve true competitive advantage. In many ways, a solid supply chain provides that backbone for good customer service. If the process from product creations to the hands of customers run smoothly, everyone will be happy. But if one little hiccup causes a delay or malfunction, an unplanned price hike, customer satisfaction, or even a public relation disaster can occur. Ladies and gentlemen, I always articulate or strongly the fact that the challenges we face in our organizations as well in our day-to-day -day life. It is as a result of what we call misalignment within the supply chain. And therefore, supply chain management is part and parcel of our day-to-day -day life. It is also one of the key mechanisms which 
can be used by government to implement a policies. Government face what we call uncertain times and difficult decisions in managing their economies and ensuring the security and prosperity of their citizens. One of the hard pressed means to combat these decisions is through effective public procurement and supply chain management. It is therefore important to know that SEM is applicable in or across industry, all industries and sectors. Many individuals and organizations have failed to recognize the strategic importance of supply chain management. The strategic impact is often underrated. I can say that before COVID. And of course, in most institutions, it is not accorded the professional education accreditation it deserves. I can give you an example of an institution where they were having supply chain management programs because they were streamlining their programs some few years back they had to cut off supply chain management programs in their MBA. And today we see the strategic importance of supply chain management is something we can afford to deal without. This is evident in the number of universities we see in the continent that are offering supply chain programs. You see, across the continent, the situation is not appealing at all. We have a handful of countries that are driving from a governmental perspective to shape supply chain management. You have countries such as South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, Ghana, Nigeria. In many higher education institutions also, as I've articulated, supply chain management does not feature in the curriculums, yet it is a fundamental to our daily lives. How can we be able to manage that? I can attest to the fact that COVID-19 has had an extreme impact on our global supply chain as we have all witnessed, creating awareness of the importance of supply chain management. Government and businesses, individual consumers, became or struggled to procure basic product and materials and were forced to confront the fragilities of modern supply chains. The urgent need to design smarter, stronger and more diverse supply chains became one of the lessons of COVID-19. As you can see, some of the key patterns or what we've learned is that organizations are embracing you know, digitalizations, the need for professionalization of supply chain management, building capacity, increasing spending on research and development, use of e-procurement systems, improving uh, transparency and accountability in our procurement systems. If you can recall, in many organizations account, we had challenges with uh, what corruptions around COVID-19 um, uh, funding. There have been a lot of calls around fostering localizations and industrialization to promote local support. There are a lot of calls for Africa to be less dependent on China and the West for the supply of basic commodities. There is a need to promote Africa inter-trade. We talk about the need, the fostering of Africa continental free trade agreement and force accountability. Those are all the impetus as a result of what COVID-19. Indeed, we could all attest that the outbreak of COVID-19 was an impetus to accelerate efficient supply chains in Africa. And you agree with me that since the emergence of COVID-19, conversations around supply chains are happening far more frequently. I expect that people will begin to have interests, of course, which many are, and will be able to leverage that to build a stronger workforce for Africa. Esteemed colleagues, let me take the opportunity 
to appreciate and congratulate you all for choosing supply chain management as your career of choice. You have made a very wise career decision and I can assure you, it should be noted that we are all at different phases of our supply chain career. Some may be looking forward to choosing a career in supply chain management. Some have already chosen supply chain and are looking forward to advancing their career. For example, obtaining their bachelor's degrees, honors, masters, or PhDs. Why some may be setting themselves for career success, developing and leveraging on their supply networks and obtaining promotion in the area of supply chain management at their workplaces. Nevertheless, irrespective of where you are in your career, I believe strongly that ISCA and its team of affiliates and other stakeholders that are fostering supply chain management can support you in achieving your spirit. The supply chain field is a good career choice. A research that was conducted by the Council of Supply Chain Management Professional attests that 95% of respondents say they are excited to have a career in supply chain. And most of them were within the age of 30 years and above. Also, as you can see on the screen, a research that was conducted also in 2021 by the Association for Supply Chain Management revealed that Despite a stressful year, supply chain professionals continue to report high job satisfaction. This is an indication of the importance of supply chain management in our society today. They are the people or individuals that are moving from accounting, from education, from engineering. They want to be part of supply chain because supply chain management is eminent. Some of the key facts, despite these challenges that we have, and based on the interest which is there in supply chain management, the fact that I have articulated in a summary form is that we still have a lot of universities that have not come to the path. We still have many professional organizations or research institutions focusing on supply chain research are still limited. Even those that have fostering supply chain careers or uh, professionalization or qualifications. They do not have any clear career path or professionalization towards supply chain management. Many professionals, they do not have adequate supply chain management background. Our career advancement is a challenge. Also, which where are we moving? You have those that are needs to follow coursework based on the nature of the job, that they need to engage in, or those that will be focusing on research-based masters. It's still not vividly clear in many of our institutions. The challenge of developing sound proposals for those that are advancing their supply chain, completing the research project process is a challenge. We also have lack of capacity in terms of supervision for many of the institutions that even have interest to drive on supply chain management programs. Those that are coming in the picture have academic writing challenges and to be able to develop these skills, time management, funding to support their studies, networking, mentorship and coaching are all realities that we must face at the moment as we develop and try to boost the supply chain management as a full discipline. What can we do? The question that we can ask ourselves, what can ISCA do to support these aspirations in building supply chain management capacity in the continent? Let me give a brief background of what ISCA stands for. The African Institute for Supply Chain Research is a nonprofit leading Pan-African Inter-Institutional Research Institute meaning it has affiliations with different institutions in the continent. It was established in 2018 with the aim of bridging the existing gap 
in research on supply chain management. And there are a lot and numerous professionals that we're striving to work with to be able to build that particular capacity in supply chain management. And the key strategic objective of the Institute is to be able to achieve or lead to the achievement of the strategic priorities, for example, in South Africa, the National Development Plan, the Africa Agenda 2063, and the United Nations Development, Sustainable Development Goals. The Institute is currently housed in the College of Economics and Management Sciences at UNISA, which we have an affiliation, and we're working in building regional offices in Nairobi for East Africa and in Ghana for West Africa. We're working very hard. The last year has not been easy, but we are on the good path towards that. Let me say, here, ladies and gentlemen, that at the heart of ISCA is a desire to build supply chain management and leadership capabilities to drive supply chain innovation in the continent. ISCA is therefore positioned to play an important role in ensuring that businesses and public sector executives are able to develop a broader view and constructively employ smart and well-researched supply chain management instruments locally and internationally to enhance quality and margin management. Accordingly, ISCA enables the building of competitive institutions so that government and businesses can responsibly generate the growth that the continent desperately need. And we ask the question, what do we do in order to meet up with those aspirations? Our key value propositions have been categorized into four as refined in 2022, with a focus on research and development, training and capacity building, advisory and consulting, outreach and networking. We are looking forward to capitalize on these value propositions to support supply chain management and enhancement. With regards to research and development, we provide organizations with profound supply chain insights, powerful connections, and clear visibility. That is where we want to go to. And therefore, the various categories of supply chains uh, research that we conduct will look at issues around case studies, surveys, in-depth qualitative and quantitative research, market analysis. The focus on ISCA is across industries, across all industries and sectors, in both public and private sectors. And we look at the whole scope of the value chain, supply chain systems from value chain procurement, public procurement, logistics, transport, operations, production management. We try as much as possible to be able to, as an approach, to build because we said, who is ISCA? Or what is ISCA? ISCA is for us and it's for all of us. And therefore, we want to be able to look at the specific needs of organizations to be able to conduct research to help those organizations make informed decisions based on innovative research solutions. In 2022, we have categorized our research focus areas into four thematic areas, which we call public procurement for inclusive economic development, accountability and good governance, infrastructural development, emerging supply chain issues, looking at COVID-19, digitalizations, sustainable supply chains. With regards to the training and capacity building. We want to be able to support master's and doctoral capacity development and advancement, and also build the skills of our supply chain actors for them to be efficient and develop the capabilities to improve on their day-to-day -day jobs. We know, as I've indicated, that supply chain management is not a destination, but it's a journey. 
and it continues to evolve. And once we're in practice, we need to be able to improve on, our, on ourselves with the day-to-day -day new developments so that we can make a difference in our organization. With regards to the advisory services that we need to be able to provide, we have identified certain key areas that are very, very fundamental in shaping supply chain management. You would have heard in probably in different uh, fora about the need to provide advisory support structures in organizations. We've got a lot of trainings. What comes out of the training, we need to be able to support the implementation of efficient supply chain strategies within organizations. Ensure that we have systems and procedures, governance systems in place. We need to be able to assist organizations with procurement capability assessments, technical specifications writing. You know very well that one of the big problems in procurement and supply chain management is that of writing the right specifications for goods and services or terms of references. We need to be able to support institutions that are coming up and developing supply chain management programs with sound curriculums and standards. We need to be able to support our emerging SMMEs as small businesses to be able to develop efficient proposals in responding to tenders. We need to be able to support our masters and doctoral students in terms of review of their proposals, in terms of development of their instruments, in terms of analysis of their data and all whatnot. We need to be able to support organizations as well to be able to come out and make decisions based on um, sound research that have been conducted. In line with our outreach program, I can tell you that for the past two years, we have been able to um, execute this particular value proposition efficiently. We have been able to run Pan-African uh, Pan Supply Chain Management uh, Visual Summit, our research support webinar series, a Game Changer series for 2021. We are looking forward to striving on our executive research roundtable focus group discussions, seminars, and lecture series. And that describes the value propositions of FISCAL. Let me now take you to some of the highlights for 2021. We actually conducted 19 research support webinar series sessions. We are proud to be able to have acknowledge our facilitators and dish out certificate of participation to a participant who attended the sessions. And we're going to do that beginning with this session. We had nine supply chain management game changer series for 2021. We had the second Pan-African uh, supply chain management visual summit with over 500 registrations and over 250 in attendance. We have developed the repertoire report for that particular summit is available for you to utilize. We are finalizing a survey on supply chain management, post, on sustainable supply chain management post COVID-19 in Africa, which is in collaboration sponsored by SIPS. We develop a training manual on bid committees. We still looking forward to funding to be able to support our masters and doctoral students so that we can be able to request you to attend the research support trainings free of charge. We were able to submit one proposal with Kabbalah University in partnership and we signed a memorandum of understanding for possible collaborations with Kissing in Kenya. And now, what are we going to do in 2022? In 2022, firstly, Based on the key thematic areas that we have identified for our research, we have sub teams that we're putting out there and we're calling all prospective experts that are there to be able to join us so that we can be able to conduct sound and efficient research to support supply chain management advancement. 
these sub teams will be available based on the request on this um, presentation, which will be out there, and it will also be on the ISCA website. We have also developed and identified 20 capacity building programs, or I call it skills and training or continuous professional development program. We're going to run this program in support with SIPs, and those who attend these programs will be able to benefit from CPD point from SIPs. We encourage you. We have looked at, there will be more that will be coming, but we felt that let us focus on one and two days just to focus on the key challenges that you're facing or SM practitioners are facing in the job. We've identified esteem facilitators that will guide us through this particular process. And I'm therefore requesting that you be part of it. If you have the capabilities to serve as a facilitator, please do extend the expression of interest. If you would like to attend, please make sure you do because it will definitely contribute enormously to your job performance. We have also come out with a training calendar for our research training. We believe that the sessions that we have in now gives you a perspective. We want to be able to take you on a more detailed, hands-on sessions so that you can be able to build capacity and be able to complete your studies on time. Looking at issues on introdu introducing you to what are the expectations that you need to have for you to be a master's or doctoral students? How do you write sound research proposals? We have an opportunity to review your work and to make sure that for each of these sessions before you leave, leave them, you should be able to have reviewed work and it wouldn't be a talk show. We, as indicated, these are the areas that we have highlighted that we'll be working on. And if you want to participate as a consultant, please do express your interest to be part of the team. In terms of our outreach and networking, this year we're going to be having the third Pan-African Supply Chain Management Visual Summit in October. Of course, it will be two days, unlike one day previously, and we want to get a blend of industry and academia to be part of this exciting event. By March this year, the program will be out and it will be available on our social media platform as well as the ISCA website. We have already developed a schedule for the research support webinar series, commencing today that I'm giving you a perspective on how we, would, we want to support you. And I will encourage you to also look at our social media platform and our website, and the links will be provided so that you can be able to register on time to benefit from this event. I want you to know that our research support webinar series are open to everyone and is for free of charge for you to be empowered. After this session, we're going to meet again on the 24th of February, 2022 with Prof. Olabanji Oni from the University of Fort here that will be talking to you about formulating and clarifying the research topic. I would encourage you that you follow the session systematically and uh, taking it from where you are and building. And as you attend the session, you should be able to, it should be able to work you through. We have organized the flow of the presentation such that it starts with formulating the problem, generating your research ideas, getting started with your literature review, going detailing with what advanced um, uh, literature search and identifying the right sources, organizing that information that you have and citing them adequately in your document, understanding the research philosophies and approaches, understanding qualitative research, understanding quantitative research, understanding mixed research methods, negotiating access on, and research ethics, getting started with your research sampling and selecting samples, collecting and analyzing your secondary research data, 
um, uh, qualitative data analysis, your quantitative data analysis, quantitative, quantitative data analysis and, and various techniques, the research methods and uh, statistics using SPSS, how to write effective conclusions for a dissertation or thesis, preparing and submitting your research or dissertation thesis, writing papers and articles from your thesis or dissertation, commercialization of your research output. So if you look at it, it is systematic. I encourage you not to miss a session. Also, for the Game Changer series, we have developed quite an exciting program. You will be starting, will be starting on the 22nd of February with an interesting topic and an exciting speaker, strategic sourcing and Africa continental free trade agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a topic of the moment. We'll also move then with panel discussion, looking at what? Supply chain management professionalization. Is there a need for Africa to have a standard teaching curriculum? I think this is a discussion that should invoke perspectives. And we have been also systematic in getting those that are transforming. Paul is the current chairperson of the Interim Supply Chain Council in South Africa from the National Treasury. Stella Odo is heading and driving supply chain from Ghana. And Charles is, has been an inspiration to transformation in supply chain management in Kenya. If you look at on the 22nd, 26th April, 2022nd, we have one of the finest speakers and scholars of supply chain management in the continent by John Karani, who is the current chairperson of Kisi in Kenya. He will be talking to us about how do we use supply chain management as a game changer for national discourse and transformation. And on the 31st of May, we're going to be having another panel discussion, which we're going to look at how we leverage strategic procurement to enhance service delivery and sustainable inclusive growth. On the 28th of June, we're going to be talking about the constitutional and legal basis for targeted procurement practices in South Africa. And we want to learn and get perspective, for example, those that are already in the game, for example, in Kenya. On the 26th of July, we're going to be having Grigori Oteno, the future of procurement moving beyond medical technology. And the 30th of August, ladies and gentlemen, you recall, August is Women's Month. We're going to be having one of the finest ladies, women in supply chain, talking to us about gender responsive procurement and transformation in Africa. On the 22nd September, we're going to having an international and profound speaker, Dr. Vos Frederick from Netherlands to talk about public procurement lessons and experience from the Netherlands. What lessons can we draw from the Netherlands? And on the 25th of October, we're going to be having a panel discussion again, what municipality must do to transform supply chain and improve audit outcomes. For those of us that are in South Africa, you know the challenges that our municipalities are facing. You know the um, outcomes of the um, Auditor General reports over the years. And we're going to conclude with the Game Changer series on the 29th of November, looking at procurement for zero and fourth industrial revolution, the opportunities and challenges of it. Yeah, going to have that's fine, thank you. Professor Bernardo Nicoleto, Nicolet from Spain. He's actually written a book on this and we'll be delighted to have him on this platform to share his perspective. I think this gives you and us, yeah, and those of us that are within our social media platform an understanding and perspective of 
what is ahead of us, an exciting year for ISCA and for all of us. And if you've realized in terms of the planning, we have speakers and panel discussions. And of course, we are encouraging all the upcoming supply chain practitioners that um, there are opportunities that we can be able to engage with the Institute. Find a way to make a difference by serving as a part-time researcher. Let's continue to look for avenues and opportunity for you to serve as a postdoctoral fellows. There are opportunities, especially in 2023 for volunteer positions and field workers that can be able to collect data and assist us. So contact us so that we can be able to make a difference. And there are clear benefits. As I indicated, ISCA is a nonprofit research institute. We have an opportunity to provide our exempted with section 18A in terms of the South African tax system. So when you be part of us and support the institute, we're looking for what to um, positive minded individuals and institutions in terms of working together so that we can all benefit from individual and organizational perspective. Uh, for ISCA, which is serving as a knowledge hub, these resources that we're going to be um, uh, producing is going to help you and I and our organizations as we continue to strive to produce what in an innovative research solution, building capacity, increased and supporting our students to improve their throughput, supporting the structures for SCM students to advance and enhance collaboration between industry and practice and academia. And of course, when we do that, we can be able to leverage, gain competitive advantage, improve policy and decision-making, improve good governance and accountability leadership and reporting. And of course, promoting sustainable development and inclusive growth in the continent. And when we do that, we contribute to the alleviation of poverty and employment, inequality, and improve on our skills and competencies. On this note, I just want to thank you so much for listening. I will encourage you to visit ISCA website, um, correspond with the ISCA administrative team with the emails that are there, express your views, and let us all work together to make a difference in the continent. I want to thank you once more for listening. Let's continue to, to keep safe and respect COVID-19 protocols. Thank you very much and over to you, our program director. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ambe, for the very informative uh, session we had. And thank you for clarifying what ISCA is all about. I believe that now we all have a clear view of ISCA as a whole. Uh, I'm going to continue with the program. I see we do have some questions from our chat box. I'm going to take you through the questions and Professor Amber will be able to answer your questions. Okay, the first question, it says, how does ISCA support or collaborate with international and county specific uh, supply chain professional bodies? Over to you, Professor Ambe. No, thank you very much. I think we're looking forward to that uh, collaboration. Um, um, we've been working already, signing an MOU with uh, SIPS, and uh, we're looking with other research institutions, organizations in the continent and internationally so that we can work through uh, MOU. We can collaborate on research, we can collaborate on capacity building, we can collaborate on advisory, we can collaborate on outreach and networking activities. Thank you, Prof. I don't know if I was explicit on that. Okay, thank you so much, Prof, for that. And uh, moving forward, we do have another question from Dr. Nimbano Desri. Uh, okay, the question is, uh, how can we start organizing academic from 
Okay, he says the presentation is well informative and we need to have the, that PPT for further reference and more understanding. But the question says, how can we start organizing academic? Okay, I can see the question. How can we start organizing academic and professional trainings for capacity building for ISCA members? Let me pause there. And the academic and professional training, we already indicated that we're going to start. If you look at, we've indicated the, some of the areas we want to focus on. It is not exclusive. And therefore, uh, Dr. Nimpano, please kindly contact the secretariat and express your interest to be part of the team so that we can work together. Like I said, ISCA is not me, ISCA is not Vinolia, ISCA is for all of us. It is only when we work together, we can make a difference. The second part is that, is there any possibility to send some funding proposals to African Development Bank or the World Bank or AU for supporting our plans? Of course, we need to strive to that. We've developed those thematic areas we can focus on. And I want to say, probably take the opportunity to say that uh, Dr. Nimpano, when you do that, we work together. We said we need to be able to have uh, project owners. Project owners, for example, if there's a nice area within the focus area, or even if it's not there, that you think might be fundable for these institutions, we can work together. And all of us will be part of it. You, who came up with the idea and that particular proposal, will be the project owner and be able to lead that particular project. Dr. Nimpano, I don't know if I answered you well. Okay, thank you so much, Prof, for taking that question because I was having uh, some difficulties with my laptop, it was freezing. But thank you so much for taking that question and continue with it. Uh, we're going to move forward with um, another question from Abel Zuge. Okay, he says, just an observation from the prof's presentation, we need to do more as ISCA on the issue of professionalization of SCM. And secondly, the issue of ensuring that SCM is placed on the position it deserves in organization structure based on its undoubted undoubted importance. So I believe this was just a comment. Would you like to say something about this, Professor Ambe? Okay, of course, yes. I think that's why we decided that as part of professionalization, um, we need to be able to engage in capacity building. And that uh, I'm also sitting as the deputy chairperson of the Supply Chain Management Interim Council, which is a body um, that is aimed to be able to champion the professionalization in the country um, with the objective of being a statutory um, um, body for both um, the public and the private sector. And we're going to work from ISCA perspective, we have identified all of these areas to support professionalization. But I would like uh, Dr. Um, um, Zukem, if you, there are other ways you think that we can be able to drive, you know, uh, over and above what we have shared you can be able to, I mean, um, come on board, let us uh, see how we can, we, can, we can make a difference. We decided to include the advisory um, um, value proposition because of that also, because over and above training, we need to be able to su provide support to organization. Uh, sometimes we need to be able to support them in order to implement the policies that they have. We need to be able to support them to ensure that they have proper, um, um, systems, governance and systems in place, policies and procedural manners on supply chain management that needs to be in place that we need to be able to support them. And over and above that, we need to be able to support institutions to be able to build, you know, um, and, and develop supply chain management uh, qualification. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Okay, we do have another question from Ingrid, which says, does supply chain minimize the amount of touches and the touch time in supply chain transactions so as to reduce the number of potential failure points? The fundamental, as we've indicated, that supply chain management, uh, um, you 
before I answer this question, uh, I, I like uh, there's a very interesting example I always like to give. The fact that I said, um, and, and let me just, um, declare firstly that in every forum that I've said what I'm going to say now, I've <clears throat> always got um, um, a different perspective, especially for those who have divorced. I'm saying that if we all knew supply chain very well, the rate of divorce will be minimized. The rate of divorce will be minimized because supply chain management is all about building relationships and understanding the needs of the end customer. And if we understand each other, therefore we'll be able to satisfy them adequately. Hence, does the supply chain minimize the amount of touches and touch time the supply chain transaction, we need to ensure that there must be value. There must be value for us to ensure that we satisfy the end user. And if we follow these principles at the right time, at the right place, the right quality, we would be able to ensure that we minimize the failures in our supply chain management systems. You agree with me that all the problems, and I see the next question is talking about uh, uh, misalignment in the supply chain. This is something I often say that all problems, probably almost, let's say most of the problems that we have in our society, in our organizations, in our community is because of misalignment. It's because of misalignment in our supply chain. Carry on, Vinoria. Okay, thank you, Prof. Um, I heard you speaking about misalignment. So I'm not sure if you have covered the whole question. So we're gonna move forward with um let me let me just expand on that. I just want to give an example, especially those that are in the, in the public sector. When I was talking about a program around writing um, effective specifications for goods and services, if a department write a wrong specification, what happens? The first thing is that we might be able to get not having the right service provider because the specifications or terms of reference was wrong. It's misalignment. We might go through and we appoint a wrong service provider. At the end of the day, what happened? The right product or services will not be provided adequately. It's misalignment. So at a high level, we need to be able to ensure that we understand the need of our end customers, the need of our partners in the supply chain management systems. I would have loved this session to be a training session where I take you for a day. And then I can be able to express my perspective on how you see the supply chain. But at the end of the day, we need to be able to capitalize on our core competencies to ensure that there is value in our supply chain process. There's value. We're delivering the quality services, the quality product, at the right time, at the right place, with the right specifications, we'll manage the aspect of misalignment. It's our strategy and our practices aligned. One of the key fundamental areas in my PhD was looking at the practices and strategies within the supply chain management. We see the classification on supply chain management practices to what we call lean supply chain or agile supply chain or what we call Li Agile supply chain management practices. And where we have the strategies and the practices are not aligned to each other. It's what we call misalignment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, we do have another question from Tokozani, which says, since the thing, since we've been 
capacity on SC, especially highly qualified academics? Is it possible for an institution to develop the coursework masters that would be offered in different institutions? Meaning, sorry about that. Meaning that the accreditation and quality assessment be monitored um, and enforced by the ISCA or similar modules being offered to different service, to service different provinces underpinned. Okay, sorry, let me, let, let, let me reread the question. It says- Let me take you to, let me take you to, since we didn't, um, uh, since we've, within capacity on supply chain, especially highly qualified academic, is it possible for an institute to develop the coursework masters that will be offered in different institutions. I want to say it is very, very possible. Meaning that accreditation and quality assessment been monitored and enforced by ISCA. Of course, they are quality assurance body for different uh, organizations. In South Africa, you have um, QCTU that is uh, functioning for, for assisting TVET and private institutions. And you have um, um, higher educational institutions that have been monitored by the Council of Higher Education. And those are the two bodies that are responsible in terms of that. I think what ISCA can be able to do at this particular moment is to be able to provide that technical support in terms of sound curriculums that we, we can be able to embark. In the South African context, where we are working towards to is to develop um, technical standards that will be able to guide curriculums. We have already developed a draft technical standard for professional practice. And the feeling is that the Council of Higher Education, based on, on our engagement, is willing to support the development of a, a competency framework for higher education. And if that can be worked together, um, uh, it creates that alignment to be able to get um, that. All what I'm saying is that you need that accreditation for me, the, that South African context, to my just best of my knowledge, it's with QCTO and also the Council of Higher Education. Or similar models be offered to service different province, uh, province underpinned by ISCA Council. Fantastic. We can be able to support supply chain transformation, develop content curriculum. If need be in the future, that we can be able to develop program around masters and course. So that is what research institutes they do. Research institutes, they provide masters and PhDs degree, but for now, we are not yet there. The whole objective is that we need to be able to form affiliate to support our partners universities. And as we build up and as we grow, we will be able to arrive at this particular decision or at this point where we can be able to stand on our feet. And a uh, group of extreme, extreme professionals sourcing from industry and government requirement, fantastic. At the moment, ISC has got that. And if you feel you can provide that mm -hmm. services, I will encourage you to join the ISCA team so that we can be able to support. And as we indicated that we need to provide advisory services and consulting services. Those services are not limited to a particular industry and sector, it's wide and across, across all industries and sectors. So the contact details are there. If you feel you have the capabilities and technical ability, please kindly contact the ISCA administrative team. Thank you. I see Dr. Um, Zuke's hand has uh, raised his hand. Yes, oh, Dr. Sorry, sorry, Prof. I actually I actually wrote what I wanted to say here, that uh, on the on the issue of misalignment, I think we have a problem, especially in public procurement, uh, because there's, there's there's a lot of policies that are pro people, pro people policies, like preferential treatment, you know, all those kind of policies and at the same time, we're trying to achieve uh, value for money in procurement. There's a bit of misalignment in that in that area. I think in one of our game changer series, we probably need to uh, to have a discussion on that as well. That's that's my contribution. All right, thank you. Kindly note it and then send it down to the team so that we can look at it and then uh, we can engage on that. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Vinole. Okay, thank you, Prof. Um. I'm now going to give those who would like to ask their own questions, the opportunity to do so before we continue with the program. If you do have any question that you'd like to present to Prof, this is the time to present your question. 
you can just unmute yourself and then uh, say your question. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Charles Olo in Kenya. And uh, I think having worked with the ISCA, I mean, uh, I, I, I can see where we are going. The only thing now we are going to, uh, to be also miss and among ourselves is the sense of mentorship and coaching. People go to the office, they work, but uh, nobody holds their hands even to, to, to make them not fall. So one of the things which I would suggest also among ourselves is an element of, um, apart from career preparedness and development, uh, mentorship and coaching should be also key because we have professors here where people work for so long. And I think we, we can build this supply chain uh, to a level that uh, we need in Africa. And uh, COVID money, uh, I, I, could see, I could see Malawi having those problems, sucking almost everybody. And it's all supply chain issues. And it's not uh, just Malawi, it is even Kenya, it's everywhere. So we have be, we, we are lucky that we, it started and we are there is the journey which is going to take long, but I appreciate the inputs for everybody. And also, uh, especially Prof Ambe, who has really uh, steered us through all this journey. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Charles. Thank you very much for all the hard work. Um, I think I want to acknowledge um, um, Reverend Charles as one of the backbone of the um, activities of ISCA who have worked tirelessly and trying to ensure that the uh, ISCA value proposition is realized, um, working and trying to establish uh, partnerships and affiliations across the continent. I think we all can do that and be part of it. And I want to reiterate that um, the Institute is not Prof. Ambe. Prof. Ambe is just, she is just the leader in trying to make sure that we achieve this. All of us are part of the Institute. Make yourself useful and be part of the Institute. Make it your home. Thank you. Hello, can I make a comment? Yes, go ahead. Maybe just to add on what Charles has said. Yeah, so this is just for, from Kenya. Uh, um, I think what Charles has said is very, very important, uh, but uh, just on the basis of the, of the topic of the day, uh, what is most important is to encourage the young and budding uh, supply chain professionals, uh, both at the universities and those ones who are finished, to join uh, professional uh, associations and bodies where you know, they become part of communities of practice, and there they are able to meet experienced and uh, uh, seasoned supply chain professionals who can handhold and mentor and coach them so that at least they can know that uh, supply chain uh, 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 management is a profession just like any other profession. Thank you, back to you. Back to you. Yes, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Um, Hello. Yes, you can go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dolly Mafam from South Africa. Thank you very much, Prof, for, for such an inspiring and comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, it, it brings hope in, 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 in the, the, the profession. In your slides, uh, you had this question, which I liked very much, and I wish I wish uh, maybe there could be a, a platform where we deliberate on it. Is supply chain management leveraged to drive SDG and inclusive growth? Um, I, I really, I, I'm from sustainable development uh, background, and I believe and I see supply chain as a tool to assist the countries and also institution to be in that space. And my answer to that is that uh, we're not yet there. It's still a journey, but I will really want, I, I was very much um, interested in the activities that are aligned from the institution. I don't think uh, we are addressing the issue, issues of sustainable development enough. And I will um, just make a reflection or request to, to say that uh, I think we need to be in the space and then we need to be seen uh, reflecting Africa in that space. In most of the articles that um, I'm studying sustainable procurement, uh, and it's very difficult to get uh, literature in that area. 
but uh, really I like, I like the, way, the work of this institu institution and this platform uh, is gonna uh, kind of enhance our career. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Dolly. I think uh, my response is that, of course, we have not. And um, in previous uh, presentations that I've made, um, I've articulated on this a lot, issues around strategic sourcing, you know, um, issues around localization and industrialized supporting, you know, emerging um, uh, black owned businesses, you know, issues of diversity and inclusivity. But um, probably you could contact the administrative team. I have a student also working on um, a sustainable um, um, public procurement. And um, there are other things that we've done around that area. And if you look on the on slide, um, um, as I can put it here on slide, 16, we talk about public procurement for inclusive economic development. You see some of the core focus areas that we want to be able to support, you know, procurement planning, target strategy, preferential procurement and set aside requirements, strategic sourcing and commodity management, enterprise and supplier development, sustainable public procurement, equity, inequality and diversity, gender responsive procurement, contract management, localization and uh, industrialization, procurement spend analysis, total cost of ownership, SMME development. So there's a lot that we're going to focus on this. And I'd like you to contact the team so that we can chat in the background and then to see how we can make progress in this respect. Thank you. Okay, the next Hello. one can continue. Hello. 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 Yes, you are. Yes, please proceed. Yeah, sir. Sir, very good evening, sir. I am Saranan calling from India. Uh, actually, I ask you one simple question, sir. Uh, how to develop for the supply chain management in uh, India to Kenya, or how to uh, applying the job opportunity for in the Kenyan country, sir, Indian people? for the Indian people uh, staying in the Kenya, Kenyan country, and job opportunities, how to mobile the job opportunities, sir, the Kenyan country. That's it, sir. All right, thank you very much. I will then I will recommend that the uh, Reverend Charles comes in, or Prof. Emmanuel, um, our team from Kenya, probably they could come on to respond, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. I, I will send my I will send my CV and then I, all the things that I will updating for myself, sir. I, I am sending my CV, sir. That uh, in your mail ID, sir. No problem. But let, let me give you a heads up as uh, as we would like to also help you. Uh, jo Joseph Fat, who is going to, uh, to to help me also, is the head of the Kenyan team for Ayaska. But uh, when it comes to these employments and uh, all that, first of all, India has a, a, a very large association, an institute actually, which is under their professionals. And they will always have the linkage with the others like in Kenya. So first of all, and also the, at, at, the, at the global level, we have those institutes or associations which are linked to IFPSM. So when it comes to employment, you know, it becomes a very tricky thing. But first of all, I would encourage you to become a member of your own local institution. And then from there, uh, I mean, association, you have those qualifications required. And because of international nature, you also look at those international organizations which can employ you, like the UN, like INGOs, which are international national um, organizations, non-profit organ organizations. And uh, if there's anything which you need an exchange for, then I would rather that uh, uh, you is uh, association to association so that we see what partnership can be done because these exchange programs are not easy. You remember that each country has its own problems with the labor and the labor laws and exchanges and all that. But when you see a job of international nature, which also you qualify, then one thing is the UN uh, website, which is inspira.org, www.inspira.un.org will help you to infilter through international organization, um, uh, INGOs, sorry, international, uh, non-governmental organization like 
world vision, like uh, I am, uh, I mean, um, Catholic lip service and many more, then you could, but if, if we focus on Kenya, it will be disaster because we are also having a lot of problems with the employment. But I will leave that also to Yeah, yeah. What I, what I'm saying is that uh, you know, once you are a, 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 a supply chain professional with the international certifications, that that makes you a global uh, uh, citizen and a global supply chain professional, and therefore you can work everywhere. The only important thing to know is that in every country, you require a permit, a work permit, uh, if you are coming directly. But if you are being seconded by an international organization like the one uh, 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 Reverend has said then that will be different. You, you are able to apply and then just come in as a, an expatriate or a, 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 an international consultant. That, that, that is okay. But like he is properly said, all, all countries have their own labor laws and employment uh, rules, and therefore which you will have to you know, uh, uh, adhere to. Over. Thank you very much. Over to Vinole. Uh, thank you so much. I see Dr. Ted's hand is up. You can continue, Dr. Ted. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Prof, um, for the presentation. Um, I think one of the challenges that uh, we should all have as ISCA team and even participants is to see how we will be able to propagate whatever is being discussed and to encourage other professionals who are not already within this scope to um, try to jump on board and participate in what is going on this time around. Um, I guess that going beyond 100 participants at any given sitting will be really good for ISCA as we move into this year. And I'm wondering if we could challenge ourselves that um, in the next two weeks that we're getting into the next presentation, at least you and I will try to invite one person at least to also come in to benefit out of what is going on. In so doing, we will see ourselves growing our numbers and we'll be able to continue to advocate and uh, chart a good part and presence on the continent. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ted. I think uh, I cannot over or probably echo, you've already said it well, if we all have just said that Ice guys for all of us, and let's work together to build it. And uh, thank you for that um, um, recommendation. Finolia, over to you. Thank you so, so much, Prof. Uh, is there anyone who would like to present their question before we close? Yes. Hello. Okay, you can go ahead. Thank you, Grozar, uh, Gregory. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Gregory Namsonge from Kenya and I'm a member of the board, advisory board. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Professor for his uh, forward look uh, presentation. And uh, I have noted from the presentations that there are country specific differences and uh, perhaps we may need to draw a matrix or draw some inventory to find out uh, the status of each of these countries in the field of uh, supply chain. Perhaps that can help us to address them and look possibly around for the funds and do a situation analysis in each of these countries in all those areas, spheres which professor has talked about. Perhaps that's just some food for thought, but uh, so much I appreciate his presentation. Thank you very much. 
No, thank you very much, Prof. Indeed, I um, um, appreciate that. Uh, we will take in that into consideration. And probably with your support and the team from that side, also from our perspective, we can be able to work on that. We have started with the um, survey, um, um, survey which we've done with SIPS, and hopefully this year we can be able to embark on two. One of the key projects which we also wanted to do was that of, uh, we had some uh, series of reports we were looking at, for example, the supply chain intelligence, the supply chain barometer, the uh, public procurement monitor. So the objective was to look at different perspectives in terms of the country specific needs. But I believe under the portfolio also in terms of uh, procurement capability assessment, we can be able to try to work something around that. And um, we are going to note that down and then we'll find a way to work around that. This year, we might have about two or three surveys that we're going to work on, which before the summit, it will be ready. So we might consider that to be one of them and work across the continent to see um, what is it in terms of the metrics on the status of supply chain management. Thank you. I'm trusting that um, our administrators are taking down note of all the comments that are coming in and so that we can be able to address them accordingly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. Um, I see that there's uh, one person who unmuted themselves. Ingrid, would you like to say something? Yes, ma'am, please. Uh, I, I am Ingrid from Cameroon, and I'm doing my second year of university studying supply chain. And I would like if the Prof can give me an advice as a student who desired to work over staying from there. Okay, come again, Ingrid, you want uh, advice on? I want advice as a student who desire to work overseas someday. Okay, okay, no, no problem, we'll do that. Just um, send an email to me, then I can get one-on-one. -on -one. That's part of the coaching and mentorship. So, um, yes, just send an email to the administrator requesting to engage with me, and okay. then we can get your email. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank everyone who participated in this uh, presentation. It shows that uh, people are very interested in ISCA in general. Sorry about that. Uh, before we close the session, uh, Prof, do you have any comments that you'd like to make before we close the session? Now, I want just to take the opportunity once more to thank all of us here. Indeed, it was highly interactive. And I would want to um, encourage all of us for the next or the subsequent sessions. Let us, let us engage in the manner in which we have done today um, um, so that we can be able to empower um, our peers and ourselves. And um, these sessions also should didn't just be that um, it's for masters and doctoral students, especially for the webinars sessions. Um, but then it should be seen also as a session where um, we can be able to revive what we know, the good practices that we know, so that we can be able to effect changes in our own self and to our own organization. And I want to probably thank you all for that and that we have stayed up to this time and I still see the number is quite still good um, right up to this point. I know that um, we have a recommendation of sitting up to 100, we will be working towards that. I also want to be able to take an opportunity by to tell you that we will try to be able to appreciate everyone that dedicates their time here. And this session should also be considered as continuous professional development processes where you should be able to be appreciated and acknowledged. And therefore, we are going to be issuing the certificate of participation immediately after every activity, every session. So uh, Vinolia and the team will be working um, to ensure that all of us that we have attended this session, we need to be able to be acknowledged. I want to thank you all once more and to thank Vinolia and the ICE administrative team behind the scene that let us work hard, we, we've kickstart. This session today is actually kickstarting 
the ISC activity for 2022. The year looks promising and exciting. Let us all be part of it. ISC is for all of us. I thank you all and have a blessed day ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, before we leave, I would like to uh, say to everyone that we do have social media platforms where you can follow us. Uh, for those who don't know ISCA, please visit our website, which is ISCA at uh, ISCA.org.za. Uh, on social media, you can just go to African Institute for Supply Chain Research. You will find us on Facebook, Twitter. And also we do have a YouTube channel for all our videos where we upload our videos. So without wasting uh, your time, please do have a blessed day ahead. And um, we'll see you again on the 24th for RSWS. And for SCM Game Changer, we'll see you on the 22nd. Thank you so much for attending and have a lovely day ahead. Thank you. Bye. Thank you and bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.